Hey there YouTube. Today we are going back to Photography 101 because you can't become a good sports photographer or any photographer for that matter without an understanding of the three building blocks of photography. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So let's gear up and let's get going. Hello again. I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my first full episode of my sports photography YouTube tutorial channel. If you don't know me and you missed my introduction video, I'm now in my 16th year as a working professional sports photographer and photo editor. On this channel, I want to help make you a better sports photographer. No matter if you're currently a working professional or someone who just wants to make better photos from the stands or if you're an absolute beginner who just wants to take pictures of your kids this channel has everything for you. Definitely hit that like button, comment, and subscribe if you think that I could help you. Anyways, as I said, today we're going to roll it all the way back to the basics and teach you about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and how they all come together to form the perfect exposure. Knowing how all these work will teach you how to get off of that dreaded sports mode on your camera, or even worse, getting off that infamous green square. P does not stand for professional. For a quick overview, I'm going to now show you a picture of a triangle, the exposure triangle. This came straight out of a textbook. Now, don't tune away. I know a lot of you photographers have an aversion to textbooks. That's why I always make the joke. That's why we became photographers. Now, anyways, as you can see, each side of the triangle is represented by one of these three building blocks, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. In a nutshell, they essentially caption motion, lens opening, aka depth of field, and sensitivity to light, aka noise. You'll notice that this is a perfectly symmetrical triangle forming a perfect exposure. Using this illustration, you'll see that if you adjust any of these settings, the triangle is no longer in balance and you have to adjust a different setting to rebalance it. That in a nutshell is how shutter speed, aperture, and ISO are related. So now let's drill down into it. Let's start with the one that's easiest to understand, shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time your camera allows light to hit the sensor. What you hear when you press down on your camera's release button is the shutter rapidly opening and closing. If you are brave enough to do this without a lens, you could actually see this in action on a DSLR. Now, it's important to note that nowadays, mirrorless cameras don't actually have shutters, and they, so they don't make any noise. Any noise that you do hear is artificially pumped in by the manufacturer so that you know that you actually took a picture. Now, on your camera, shutter speed is typically represented as a fractional number. However, most camera manufacturers will omit the number one on top. For example, one half, one two fiftieth, one one thousandth, and typically all the way up to one eight thousandth. The higher the number, the faster the shutter, and thus the more motion that you are able to capture in a single photo. This is extremely important in sports and action photography because you generally need a faster shutter speed to capture action. Now of course there are other occasions where you will intentionally reduce the shutter speed and use a technique called panning so that you could create the illusion of motion in a single photo. This is not Photoshop, this is done by dropping the shutter speed. And here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of photos that I took at the Daytona 500. One using slow shutter and one using a standard fast shutter. Now as I indicated before when I use the exposure triangle illustration there is no free lunch however. You can't just freely adjust the shutter speed up and down. The higher the shutter speed is, the darker your image becomes. And conversely, the lower your shutter speed, the brighter your image becomes. So you'll actually have to adjust other settings to compensate if you adjust your shutter speed. So with that, let's show you what some of these other settings are. ISO is a very simple setting to understand. It is a measurement of how sensitive your camera is to light. Now don't ask me what it stands for, but the higher the ISO, the more sensitive your camera's sensor is to detecting and recording light. The lower the ISO, the more sensitive it is. So for example, if you want to see how it relates to shutter speed, 
If you increase your shutter speed, which thus makes your photo darker, you will have to raise the ISO to maintain your perfect exposure. However, just like shutter speed, there is no free lunch. If you increase your ISO, your image will get noisier. Depending on your camera manufacturer and model, this could look like colored spots, film grain, or both. Check out how this sample photo looks at 200 ISO and compare it to what it looks like at 6400 ISO. So, as you can see because of this, you generally want to keep your ISO settings as low as possible. And now, finally, let's move on to the third side of the exposure triangle, aperture. Aperture is probably the most difficult to understand of the three settings. It refers to how large the lens opening is and how much light can enter the camera. On some older lenses, you could actually manually adjust this and see it when you look through the lens. Aperture can also be visually represented on this chart if you don't have an old lens to play with. You'll also notice that aperture is represented on your camera mostly by using numbers with decimal points. In photography terms, this is known as an f-stop. I'm sure there's a reason for it, but somewhat confusingly, the smaller the f-stop, the larger the aperture, aka lens opening. The larger the f-stop, the narrower the aperture. So naturally, when the f-stop is small, in other words, when the lens opening is large, the camera lets in more light. So what does that mean? That's right, more light, that means you can get away with higher shutter speeds and thus lower ISOs. However, once again, there isn't anything free in photography. So what is the side effect of using a large aperture? It means less of your frame will be in focus. In other words, your depth of field will be shallower. Now, at first, that might sound kind of bad, but for sports photography, this is actually a good characteristic. In sports, we generally want our subject to stand out from the background so that it blurs and falls away. For that reason, we generally photograph sports at an f-stop of f2.8 or f4 as much as possible. That said, like everything else in photography, there is a bit of a trade-off. However, this time, the trade-off is financial and physical. Because lenses with a maximum aperture of 2.8 or 4.0 tend to be extremely expensive and also very heavy. So anyways, that's about all there is to it. That's my tutorial on shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and how they all work together to form the perfect exposure. Definitely play around with the settings on your camera and how adjusting each affects your final image. In a future video, I'll possibly dive in and show you some recommended settings for a number of common situations. If you think that would be helpful, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. I hope that you found this tutorial extremely helpful, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. I plan on coming out with new videos once or twice every single month, and so that you don't miss anything, definitely consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Thanks again for joining me today, and I hope to see you all again next time. Bye now.